Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'd Ayyu wa mahabba I thought it would be beneficial for us to do a reading of a very short and concise treatise and I have wanted to talk about this subject from this very treatise for quite some time and because it has great relevance for all of us especially those people involved in da'wah and with regards to the da'wah of Ahlul Sunnah it's another great work from our ulama showing us that the asl of da'wah, the asl, is with gentleness, with kindness. And the reason I wanted to talk about this, Ahabatifillah, because so many people think that this is Timir, Mumayya, so and so is Mumayya, SubhanAllah. And I'm going to tell you first what motivated me initially to start my own work about this subject, but I did not translate it into English because it was a uh, something in Arabic, but it was derived from this Arabic book. And now someone else has already translated some bits and pieces from the Arabic, so this will suffice us for now. And I got into a conversation with a old colleague of mine, a, a, a brother, who we were in the match together over 20 years ago. So we have known each other for approximately 20 years, 1997. We both began our journey leaving America to try to study something about Islam. And Walillah and Ham, the brother, stayed in Damaj for some years. But we've known each other for now since 1997. That's 20 years. SubhanAllah. With that being said, Ahabatifillah, he cut me off with a few text messages. Meaning we had this con we had a short conversation, interaction through what's up, what's up. And because I said that Dawa, the asal of Dawa, is is lean or rifq, is gentleness. He said that that's mumayya, that's kalam batil, it's this, it's that. SubhanAllah. But when we look at the evidence from the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Madhab and the Salaf and the Salafi Ulama, we find that that's basically what they say. That the, that the asl is, is gentleness. How many ayat, how many hadith talk about being uh, lean or rif, being gentle in kindness? Who's going to accept da'wah ila Allah with sternness and harshness and kicking and <coughs> beating someone? That just that goes defies the intellect and it defies the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded uh, uh, Musa alayhi salatu salam and Harun to go to to go to Fir'aun and say to him Olin Lain to say to him a gentle speech and he was the biggest So the Shaykh began his treaties he said refuting the mistaken is a means of unifying the Ummah and strengthening it upon the rope of Allah this is like we talked about before and hold on all of you steadfast to the rope of Allah and do not divide so he said refuting the mistaken meaning refuting someone's mistake is a means of unifying actually refuting someone is a cause for unification why? because you're refuting battle you're refuting a falsehood if you're refuting someone or a mistake or you're advising them and this is rectification he said it's a means of unifying the ummah and strengthening it and causing it to be stronger upon the rope of Allah, not dividing and separating it. So before we get into what uh, the Sheikh is, is saying, look at that, that principle that some people will say, no, you're refuting someone, you're, you're causing differences and you're causing splitting and division. And you're causing enmity. No. Not if the person is making an error in the deen of Allah. In fact, you're strengthening it. The argument goes as such. Because 
they are ordered to hold on to the rope of the law and not divide. Meaning that the asal is that they have to hold on to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They have to, to, to grab on. And this is, I'm giving you uh, an example. If our goal, all of us, is to hold on to this stick, for example, that's our main goal. And we unify based on holding on to this stick. The one who chooses to split from this stick is the one splitting. Or the one who doesn't properly grab onto the stick is the one who's making an, a, a mistake. So we advise him to come back to this stick and hold on to it. That's a similitude I wanted to make. In that it's not the one who is refuting, if they're refuting properly with, with gentleness and in a way... Uh, and, and that the person is really has made a mistake and so on and so forth all those conditions they're not the one causing the division unless they are causing fitna and discord and bid'ah or they are really the ones mistaken but in fact they are rectifying because they're causing the one who made the mistake to hopefully come back and come back to the the straight path Sheikh Abdul Aziz bin Baz Rahimahullah Ta'ala saw refuting the mistaken and clarifying the mistakes a means uniting the Muslims and strengthening them upon the rope of the law. And whoever remains quiet from not clarifying mistakes and evil to whoever does it thinking that refuting and clarifying the mistaken are from what divides the Ummah, then indeed he has made a great mistake and has opposed the book of Allah, the, the Quran and the Sunnah and the ijma, the consensus of the scholars, in the obligation to denounce evil and correct mistakes. Because that's a, a command from Allah, uh, from the, the Prophet ﷺ. He said, Men ra'a min kumunkarin fila yugayru hu biyad. Whoever sees a munkar and change it with his hand. Fa in lam yasateh fa bi lisanihi. If he's unable to, then change it with your tongue. Speak out against it. Fa in lam yasateh fa bi qalbihi wa dhalika adu fil iman. So if he is unable to change it with his tongue by speaking out against the mistake, then he should hate it in his heart. And that's the weakest of faith. Letting us know that's an obligation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us all throughout the Quran and praises Ahli Iman that they uh, bil maruf wa yanhauna anil munkar. They command to the good and they forbid the evil. And part of commanding to the good and forbidding the evil is helping people correct their mistakes and refuting Ahl Bidah and refuting your brother if he's made a mistake. Not necessarily publicly, but you may advise him. You have to correct the mistake. That's the point. And that's a part of, uh, that's a part of establishing correct unity, not unity on Bid'ah, not a unity on Akhwan uh, Muslimin Minhaj, not unity on Jamaat Tabliq's Minhaj, not unity on, on uh, making Taqlid to a Sufi Sheikh, not unity based on Hizbiya, even if it's to a Salafi scholar that you're making Hizbiya and Ta'asim and, and so forth, you have to follow the Sheikh so-and-so, Sheikh so-and-so he made a fatwa, you need to be on that, La. that's not the tr true unity, because that's not a Tasimu Bihablillah. Holding on to the a rope of law is holding on to the haq, wherever it comes. Then he said, indeed the sunnah has clarified that remaining silent from mistakes is a means for fitna. Spreading of corruption, division and calamities. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the likeness of the man who observes the limits prescribed by Allah and that of the man who transgresses them is like the people who get on board a ship after casting lots. Some of them are in its lower deck, and some of them in its upper deck. Those who are in its lower deck, when they require water, go to the occupants of the upper deck and say to them, if we make a hole in the bottom of the ship, we shall not harm you. If they, the occupants of the upper deck, leave them to carry out their design, they all will be drowned. But if they do not let them go ahead with their plan, all of them will remain safe. This is in Sahih Bukhari. Then he says, thus the way of the scholars is refuting the mistaken will cease to exist. They have authored many different works in that as well. So that shows us the importance of correcting someone, correcting ourselves, uh, being humble, and not, not always thinking that uh, a refutation or a clarification is... Uh, 
means that person is 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 a, is a mubtadia. La, that's a common mistake that we have. That a misconception that people have is they think every time someone is refuted, that means that that they've been declared an innovator. So and so refuted him. So what? What does that mean? Did so and so refute him based on the truth? Did so and so refute him and say that and make a de declaration that he's a mubtadia? Did so and so refute him because he saw that this was a small error or this is a mistake that this Imam of Ahlul Sunnah made? Okay, so these are all important aspects of refutations and clarifications because many people don't seem to understand that and they just take general speech and they just say, hey, so and so's be refuted. They don't even know anything about the issue. Perhaps they don't even know the language the issue was articulated in or the controversy. He might not even, oh, so-and-so is refuted. I heard that a person who, who doesn't know hardly anything about Islam once said to me about a conference that was taking, a, t taking place in the UK. And they said, but you said so-and-so, you said go to the conference. I said, yes, I said go to the conference because those are Salafi scholars, ulama of Ahl Sunnah, they've come to you in the UK. And this, you know what this person said to me? They said, but I heard that all the people were Mubtadiyah except Salih Suhaimi. La ilaha illallah. I couldn't believe that. And I, I was shocked that someone who had no knowledge, but this is what they're being fed, so they parroted what they were fed. And they spewed. Because the parent takes the seed and eats it, but it also repeats what is being told. No matter what the implications, because it's just a parrot. So this is a danger thing. We don't want to be like the parrot. We want to be based on elm and fiqh, and we don't want to talk about the ulama and back by the ulama and back by the duaat based on dalal and misguidance and mistakes. We want to be on elm and fiqh basira and understand that refutations and clarifications do not necessarily make the person who has made the mistake, who has been refuted, a mubtadia or a serious mukhti or whatever the case may be. But rather, everyone makes mistakes. Everyone might need something clarified or might need to correct something they said. The ulama do it all the time. And this doesn't lessen their stature. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala Muhammad.